Hi everyone! <laughs> Remember this experiment from earlier in the season when I took off my Fios Tonkinvillia spikes and I told you what I failed at in 2020 and how I was going to approach the propagation opportunity of a Fios spike in 2021. So in 2020, quick recap, I cut off the spikes at every single node so that I had lots and lots of pieces, lots and lots of separate nodes and I put them into sphagnum moss for the high humidity in order to propagate the nodes and see if I would get any new fires babies out of it. Right, they all collapsed. My conclusion from 2020 was that I didn't have enough energy in the little pieces of spike that were in the sphagnum moss. So what I did then this year, I thought, okay, let's not get greedy. Let's see if we can get at least four babies out of this method by only cutting the spike in half. And when I say in half, as far as Tancanvillia spike can reach up to a full meter. So in my head, I'm thinking that's a lot of energy reserves for the little baby in the node to develop, mature, and then hopefully be able to separate it from the original spike. Here we are, I don't know, maybe eight, nine months later. And let me show you what has happened so far. And I'm also going to tell you my fears from here on in. Right, four pieces, as you can see, <laughs> top, bottom, half, and let's have a look. So you can see I'm already getting some little plants out of it. Here comes one node and it's got a little plant. And last year I got this far and then the whole supporting spike here collapsed. There was not enough energy. And then my thinking was, well, I've got all of this now. So we should be fine, no? Okay. We are kind of fine, but not really. So we've got ourselves a little fires, baby, but we don't have any root extension. I'll show you my setup. Surprisingly though, up right at the top, not even close to any humidity, we have another little fires baby coming out of a node. And I've kept the sheath on just as a protection if it were now to blow off so be it but for the protection part i've just left it on because well while it's there it has more of a humidity buffer than i can provide it because the spike lives in this bottle with only hob material to support the humidity buffer at the base i don't want to go in too deep because last year this started to rot out on me and then failed when the whole supporting structure of the spike failed. So I was hoping for this to have enough humidity for the roots to grow. Now, the other pieces are doing exactly the same. Let's have a look-see. I've got a little plantlet at the bottom, but no root extension. Go up a little further, even that node is propagating itself and understandably no root extension and I have me another piece just like this let me just always making sure that I put the spike back exactly where it was in that hole the initial hole I created to make sure that the base is always in a humid surrounding but it is not touching the wet hob material and then I have this spike right here that also has its babies. These little root nubbins look a lot more promising. And it has also developed or attempted to grow one on the top here, away from everything. So propagation wise, I'm not disappointed. But the reluctancy of those roots to grow, because I can't do any separating off that major spike all those energy reserves are still intact until I have more root growth. Because you see here, this is one example where we have a collapse and I'll tell you what happened here. This spike was just as long as all the other ones behind it and it started to brown at the top. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to cut off the brown bit. I didn't go into any of the tissue and then the whole thing collapsed on me. So while it was browning, I was just thinking, well, I need the shelf space. It was too tall to put it on a lower shelf. And then it's like the whole spike said, well, that's it. I'm done. Thanks for intervening, you know. So you see, it also tried to do a little propagating of its own on the upper node. And the lower node is still intact. 
You can see all those roots trying. Now the question is if this is going to continue. It already feels hollow in there. So that all the substance gone. And then the cut pieces were always going to go brown, but they're still holding on except for this piece. And that is because I cut into the top. So if you're going to simulate or emulate this experiment with your spike, if you're doing it with a Fias or with a Phalaenopsis, yeah, don't cut the spike off at the top because it's like then the whole tissue collapses. Even though I did not cut into green spike, you can see how hollow it is in there. So we may lose this one, but you know, the reason I'm pointing this out right now is because at least you can still see green results of successful node propagation on all the ones that could make it. The question now is, are my temperatures going to make the whole project collapse for a second year in a row? Or am I going to be able to pull these through until spring when warmer temperatures come? Because this has taken a good part of, let's say, nine months to get to this point, even though the nodes started to fatten up and swell up relatively quickly after having taken the spike off the mother plant, still to get to this point, it has taken all this time. And now for the past six weeks, they have not moved at all, with the exception of this spike deteriorating because of my intervention. As a quick update, I would say, yeah, leave the spikes as long as possible. That's including Phalaenopsis spikes. I just don't have any at the moment to propagate and try this out, but leave them as long as possible because of all the energy reserves that are found in the spike where the nodes can draw from while they are maturing. Now would be ideal for me to put them under bright light for 12 hours a day on heat mats. And I think that would make everything work so much better. The radiant heat from the heat mats, increasing the humidity in the little bottle setup and the light encouraging the root growth. I don't have all of that in place. I am not going to be doing all that. But if you are at this stage or you want to try this, that would be my recommendation to grow these little plantlets on. In my case, I'm going to see if they're going to hold on through the winter. They are in the brightest west facing window that I can find, which is warm because they're right up against some glass where the sun shines in. It gets nice and toasty there. And then I move them back in the evening so that the cold glass doesn't radiate on them. So it's a bit of a fandangle for me, but it's the best I can do at this point in time to see if I can take them through to spring just to keep them tiding over. And maybe then we can have a little bit more of a burst of growth. And maybe by that time we can detach little Fias babies and grow them on. So I'm happy to say that I've learned something. My thought process was correct. Leave more energy on the spike and then nothing will collapse. Learned something new. Do not cut something off just because it looks nasty on the top. It'll make the rest of the spike protest. And now I know that it has to be much, much warmer if these guys are going to make it. Anyway, let's see what happens come spring if these guys are still around. If something happens between now and then, if they collapse, I will definitely let you know. No heat mats, no supported lighting, colder temperatures, we're dealing with a hot grower. Yeah. And propagation. The odds are against me that these are going to make it through to spring. But the signs were promising. And I'm glad that at least I got it to this point. Now we wait. Hope you thought this was interesting. Quick update. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so, so much for being here. Have yourself a beautiful day. On one condition. That you stay safe. Take care. Bye.